the 55th annual ISNA convention. In God we trust. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. The, my topic today is Sitna Hajar. There, how's that? And it's a very timely topic because we are post Hajj. And many of us have relatives and friends and family and neighbors, community members who have gone to Hajj and come back, or maybe they're not back yet. And in their very act of going to Hajj, they were remembering and honoring the memory of Sitna Hajar, our great ancestor, if you will, our foundational a foundational woman of Islam that all of us as Muslims need to know her story and know her very well if we are to live the life that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to live. Her life was a life of aqidah. It was a demonstration, a practical demonstration of aqidah, of our belief system. And it was that because of the trials in her life that she succeeded in, the most famous, most famous of which is the story of Safa and Marwa. We know that Ibrahim السلام, went to the desert with Sitna Hajar and her son Ismail. And there in the desert, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to leave them there alone. And Sitna Hajar, it is narrated that she followed him and asked him, has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to leave us here? So the first question, why are we being left here? Is it from Allah? Because if it is, I accept. And this gets at our very core belief, the core belief of the idea that if it is from Allah, it is good. Even if it looks hard, even if it looks difficult. In fact, even if it looks impossible, if it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is good. And so there she is in the middle of a barren land, a desert. There's nothing, think about that. We don't really have anything to compare that to in today's world. Where could we be? Somewhere, I suppose, in Wisconsin, maybe, where there's no uh, Minnesota, I heard that. Where, and sometimes when I'm driving, I'm AT&T, so sometimes when I'm driving through Wisconsin, my cell phone stops working. And immediately I feel like I'm disconnected, and what if I needed to call someone? So sometimes we might be somewhere where our cell phone stops working, but where would we be where there would be nothing? Even if we get lost in the woods, generally you'll find a lake or some water somewhere, something that could keep you, that would sustain you and keep you alive. Here she is in the desert. She doesn't have Google or a smartphone or any way to contact anyone. There isn't even a well. There is nothing. And yet she knows that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this lesson is crucial for, it is so crucial for Muslims to learn it, that every single one of us who will go on Hajr or Umrah anytime in our lives, will honor her by repeating her very action. Her action was to get up, okay, here I am. Allah has ordered that I am here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jalla jalalahu. And therefore, there is good in this, so I'm going to be okay. So she gets up, she got, runs to the top of Safa, looks out, nothing. Runs down, looks out from Marwa, nothing. Back. It says she doesn't look once, she doesn't look twice. Not three times and not four. When would you give up? When would you give up? When would you give up looking for the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending you? When have you given up? When have I given up? When have we given up in our lives? Where we said it's just not coming. Where our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shrunk or when we decided that our effort had been enough. When has that happened? 
We go to Hajj and we are reminded that it should not happen. Five times, six times, seven times, and then in a state of exhaustion, she sits down next to her son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu grants her what she is looking for from the place she least expected it. And this is the lesson of Sitna Hajir. This is the lesson of at least this incident in her life that we must have three things. Full and complete tawakkul, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolute trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla Jalaluhu, is taking care of us no matter what our situation is. Our situation may look absolutely impossible. If we compare it to hers, it still might look a little bit easier. We are to have absolute trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help us get to the other side of this space of difficulty that we are in. Second, we must have and put forth full effort. Absolute full effort in our role as servants of God. 100% tawakkul, 100% effort. And what is the lesson here? That if we have these two things, if we have both tawakkul and full effort, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us our reward, our blessing, our imminent blessing from a place we can never imagine. From below the feet of her son, Zamzam, the well that still exists today, that we take on airplanes and pass around. If you hear someone is sick, you might bring them Zamzam water. If you find out that someone is feeling sad, you might bring them Zamzam water as a gift. In Wisconsin and Minnesota and Texas, we give people Zamzam water from a well that bubbled up from the sand in Mecca because of the actions of this woman, Sitna Hajar. We as Muslims, when we look back at her life and we recognize just these two, if we just look at these two things, that when she arrived in Mecca, she, Ibrahim alayhi salam was a prophet of God. Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the most difficult position a human being can be in really, having to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by putting people he loves in a difficult situation. I'm not here to talk about Ibrahim and Ismail, but we know that this, this story with later on will come that Ibrahim is ordered to sacrifice his own son. And it Sitna Hajar, in her belief, in her belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in her knowing 100% that Prophet Ibrahim was indeed a prophet. And this is an important piece. Because as we as Muslims today, look at the rulings of Islam, look at our life, and we think about what does it mean to live like a Muslim. And we look back at the life of the Prophet ﷺ. If we know for sure that he was indeed Rasulullah ﷺ, and we understand what that means, we will be able to live our life with joy, joyful faith, and certainty. But Islam is like a glove. And so if we are healthy, like Sitna Hajar, Sitna Hajar she was healthy. She, was, she had a healthy spiritual self. Even when she got a trial, she knew how to put her glove of faith on and interact with that glove with health. What happens with us is that when we're struggling, and if I have a healthy hand, I live in Minnesota, so we have lots of gloves. If I have a healthy hand, I put my glove on it, as long as it was made correctly, I put it on and I'm fine. But in this situation where I were to develop arthritis, and if I developed it very badly and my fingers began to curl over each other so that I couldn't open them and separate them, and then I brought that same glove and tried to put it on and it didn't fit, would it be acceptable for me to say that glove isn't any good, bring it back to the store, or is the problem in my own hand? And this is what ha is happening to us today when we're coming to the sunnah of our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And we don't maybe understand, or maybe our belief in him as a prophet isn't as deep as the belief of Sitna Hajar in the belief that Ibrahim alayhi salam was indeed Rasulullah. It's not a small term. 
in knowing that 100% that she was indeed Rasulullah, he was indeed Rasulullah, she was able to accept from him what was very difficult for her and turn it into something that would not only be success for her, but success for all of us. Every Muslim, man, woman, child, elder, who goes to Mecca must imitate the acts of this woman. And in doing so, we demonstrate a number of things. We demonstrate what we already said, tawakkul. We demonstrate full effort. We demonstrate the understanding that if we do put forth both of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to us from places we can never imagine. But also, we demonstrate a belief in what it means to be Rasulullah. What it means to believe that Ibrahim alayhi salam was Rasulullah, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was indeed Rasulullah, and how we need to live. And if we look at Islam and we take, and we just look at it, step back and look at it for a moment, to recognize the beauty that this faith has, that we are the only faith, philosophy, whatever you want, that has at its very foundation is root and root women who are founders. Women who are so important that we see their lives in our lives. Umrah, Hajj. When I went on Hajj in 2014, and I was going back and forth from Safa and Marwa, and I thought about her going back and forth. It was a very different feeling. As she traveled back and forth, she was wondering, will I find the caravan? She expected, she had an expectation. I need to be helped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send me a caravan. Allah will send me someone. That seems the easiest solution. And oftentimes we look and expect that the easiest solution will come to us. We expect our solution to come in A or B or C. And so she went back and forth looking. And when it didn't come, she sat down exhausted. And Allah, in his generosity, sent to her what he can and is capable of and will, inshallah, send to all of us individually and as an ummah. Blessings from where we cannot expect. And certainly we are in a difficult time now, individually, for some of us, as an ummah. Others of us are feeling the weight. And we need to be sitna hajr, individually and as an ummah. And every year we are reminded of her life, to have full and complete tawakkul, full and complete effort, and expect then the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show up from a place we will not, we have, we, we're not expecting. Thank you. The 55th Annual ISNA Convention. In God We Trust. <laughs>